All right, hi everyone. I'm gonna be putting you together um, the Edgerton open source uh, high speed flash. So this is something I've been, I have a, a manual online, a PDF manual. This is, I'm basically gonna be following version 1.2 of that manual. So um, the reason I'm, I've actually have a, uh, so, so I already have one of these flashes put together but one of the transistors, let's see, where is it here? One of the transistors was damaged, so I had to uh, take it apart and replace it. Uh, this is a new uh, 6R190P6 transistor. I have that in the bill of materials to use. So everything you see, I'll just zoom in a bit closer. So you can see it's already been soldered. I've disassembled the whole LED bank. Um, what I'm showing you here is, is an LED bank assembly, so you're going to have to do four of these to complete the flash. So I start by taking these three LEDs and they all have to be oriented the same way. There's the little plus sign here and this is the original uh, template that I had designed. It's, it's, uh, it looks a little bit different than the current version of the template, but it, has, it does the same thing. So I put the, the anode, that's the positive side, towards the top. Same thing with uh, this guy, positive towards the top. And this guy, positive towards the top. And then, I just go ahead and install the clamps. So I think a 12 millimeter screw, actually you know what, I'm gonna use uh, 16 millimeter screws. So I'm using M2 screws on this. So there's two ways to turn these these clamps. Turn them so that that angled section here is towards the middle. And the holes are self-thread, self-tapping. They're a bit of a snug turn. The LEDs are pretty tough, so you can get them pretty tight. Oh, I think 16 millimeters was a bit long for this, but that's okay. And then do the same thing on this side. So that angled portion goes towards the middle. Okay, flip it over and make sure that all the anodes are the same way. So I can just see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a plus, plus, plus. So yeah, I got them all lined up. Um, yeah, so now I take my wire. So this is wire that I took from a, just a um, silicon wire here. Uh, I stripped all the, the insulator off and I was left with this. Um, it's uh, there's a little bit of solder on the end here and here so that it doesn't unravel on me um, I've already used it. I just desoldered it or took it off and now I'm gonna be putting it back on so Kind of hold this up here like that Take the Soldering iron and you'll have to add solder onto these pads. I've already done that So I'm not gonna do it again for the, for the video but Go ahead and just solder on one. Now when you solder them you don't want to pull it tight like that. Just leave a little bit of, of bend so that they can actually sit properly. Make sure there's that bend not too tight. Perfect. So you can see how there's, there's that little bit of give. And then this guy, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna have to go get some tweezers. So it might be handy just to have a, a clamp here set up. Just clamp it so that it stays sitting upright. I've got my soldering iron. Make sure I'm actually in the video here. So you can see the clamp. So a little bit of a tight fit here. Might actually shift that whole wire over a little bit because it's a little bit tight on the one end. There we go. There's a little bit of play on both sides. Okay, 
So that's the cathode, that's the negative side. Now, flip it over, this is the positive side. So, I have here these resistors. Um, these are two ohm resistors. Oh, where's the third one? Got three, there, there, there it is. Um, I've already cut these, so you can't see, you know, the, when you go and install it. Basically, there are three different lengths. So first, cut this short guy. Uh, this has got to be really short, and it goes right onto the middle one. And as you can see, the way these angles are, these, these mounts, this, this is the capacitor. The capacitor sits in a certain way. It doesn't sit, doesn't sit straight, it doesn't turn. It sits like this. So you want that resistor to go between the capacitor's pin and the pad on the LED. So here we go, soldering this on. Perfect. Okay, that's one. Now then, on, the, on this guy here, I cut the lead about, I don't know, it's about two centimeters long. Actually, I've got this one the wrong way. Here we go. And then on this guy, the lead is full length. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears. I'm pulling out the, the transistor. And I know these transistors are fairly expensive. Um, however, I know this one works. I've done a lot of testing with it. And so if I was to go and try to use a different transistor that was cheaper, I'd have to go and do a bunch of testing to find out what transistor or what, what voltage to run them at and, and you know, might have to modify the circuit, the gate driver circuit. So these work, they're kind of expensive, but I know they work. So the first thing I do is go and take this, the rightmost pin, and I just snip it about halfway down. And then I take the left pin, the leftmost pin, and bend it up, okay? So now, here's our capacitor. And again, these capacitors are pretty expensive too but um, they're film capacitors, which means they're perfect for an application like this. Um, just basically giving a whole bunch of current in the, in, the, in the time span of a microsecond. I think it puts out somewhere in the ballpark of 30 amps for one microsecond. So this pin, you can see this pin right here has already been bent over, but if you haven't bent it over yet, just bend it over facing outward. So I'm gonna get my solder up. And I'll just tin the, the pin here on the resistor, or the transistor. And then I'll go and throw it on the, the capacitor like this. Perfect. So if it's not quite straight, I try and just have a little bit of an angle like that. That's fine. Now, I'm going to go and take my, um, this is going to be the, uh, the ground wire, so this will actually connect to the controller, and I go and solder it to the same joint, so add it to that same joint. So it's a little bit of a balancing act because there's three components here that need to be soldered together. I'm just going to tin my soldering iron a little bit more here. I've already used this wire so it's already got solder on the end. If you've just stripped a wire, make sure you add solder to it. There we go. So if you're following the manual, I'm on step number 11. So this is a 200 ohm resistor that I have here. I've already cut it, I've already used it once. 
what's gonna happen is that resistor is gonna go between this pin that we just soldered, and that's the ground, uh, to this pin, and this is the gate. So it's not the, the ground on the, the transistor on the MOSFET, it's rather the, the source, the source pin. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna help the, the MOSFET, the transistor, turn off really quickly once it's done its flash. So it's gonna be easier to do this, the gate pin first. So I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna tin. Oops. Tin the gate pin. And then it's gonna be easier to do this with a, um, actually, let's flip it around. If you have a good pair of tweezers, tweezers, it would help quite a bit. So, through here. go. Now, solder the other side of that trans of that resistor onto this pin. So again, we haven't even touched the middle pin yet. That's the source on the, the MOSFET. Make sure that there's a good, there's going to be a bit of solder on here. So it takes a second to flow, for it to flow. I'm gonna just expect it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so here's the ferrite beads. One of the ferrite beads. It's um, I haven't done a lot of experimenting to find out which ferrite bead works best, but I found that adding this particular one uh, works quite well, just reducing the ringing in the in the gate in the MOSFET's gate. So if you find one that's fairly similar, you know. Um, I think it's rated for 86 ohms at 100 megahertz. Um, find one that's similar and that'll be fine, but if you want to follow my design exactly, then, then just get the, the ferrite bead that I have in the build of materials. So I've already added a wire onto this ferrite bead. Um, that's not done until a few steps later in the guide, but since I already have it here, I'm not going to go and desolder it. So here we go. I'm just going to add a little bit of, um, I'm just going to tin the end of this ferrite bead. Okay, and now this is gonna go right along with that resistor on the gate. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna put the capacitor, I'm gonna take my clamp off of the template. The capacitor is gonna go like this. So this pin, this bare pin that we haven't done anything with is going to attach to these three resistors and this pin, this is the uh, the drain on the MOSFET, it's going to attach to, it's going to connect to this wire. A um, little note about these resistors, so we don't want this part of the resistor, this side of the resistor, to touch this side of this resistor, to touch this side of this resistor. We gotta make sure that those are not touching and none of those are touching this uh, these wires. So as you lay out your resistors, just keep that in mind and have a look once you have it all soldered together to make sure that it's not, uh, that those aren't touching. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. Flip it upside down. Now it's a little bit awkward at first, Raise this up a little bit. Once you have it situated though, once it's soldered, it sits pretty good. So these resistors in my case are already bent, but in your case, you're gonna have to go and uh, wrap them around that hole, that pin on the capacitor. So I think I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna flow these. See how it looks, and you can see that 
here there's a bit there's quite a bit of space but on this side there's not really any so I'm going to go and twist this just so it's balanced um, the issue is that you have to have these all there's going to be four of these side by side and they kind of sit next to each other so the next one's going to sit here and then there's one sitting here so it's kind of awkward um, these capacitors are very large but if it's it but as you can see here now that I have a nice uh, bit of space here a nice bit of space there it looks perfect so just keeping it in the same position and now I can solder the MOSFET onto here now this is going to be a little bit awkward mm -hmm. Once you have that all set up, um, you gotta add the uh, this wire. This is the positive charging wire for the capacitor. So just add that here to the same place where the resistors are all soldered. Uh, have a look at your, your layout. Make sure that the space, you can see my space. There's a little bit of a gap here on this side of the capacitor and a little bit of a gap on this side. That's great. And then look at the resistors. So this resistor here is a little bit close to that pad. I'm going to go and just kind of tweak it a little bit. Uh, that one looks good. On this side, this pin, there's no two pins are touching each other. That's great. The, uh, the wires are all kind of firmly mounted. Hey! Okay, I'll be right there. So that is one complete bank. Um, you're going to have to do that three more times. I'm not doing it three times here for this video. I'm just going to do it once and then we'll go ahead and mount it on the case. So take it off of the template here. Unscrew the two, the two clamps. So here's the case. Um, before you get going, I'm just going to point out there's a magnet here and a magnet here. Those magnets are for the cover on the front. You can install those beforehand if you want to have that, that cover. I kind of like the cover, it keeps the LEDs safe. Um, I also have mine translucent in case I want to just make sure the LEDs are flashing properly so you can see them through the case. Anyways, I have the, uh, a couple of magnets built into the flash, into the cover. Um, so yeah, that's that. This is going to take a lot of time to print these two guys. Uh, make sure those are printing while you're doing other stuff. So this is the main, this is the front case. Now the way this gets installed is with the red wire, the positive charging wire against the wall over here. And then the next bank over is installed the opposite direction and so on and so forth. They get installed in alternating directions this way. And then finally, on this side, you can see again the positive charging wires against the wall. I'm not going to do the side, I'm just going to do one of the middle, um, middle positions so that it's easier to see. So go ahead and rest these LEDs here in place. They're going to tend to wiggle around a bit. Take your clamping, your clamp down. I'm using, uh, I switched to 12 millimeter long M2 screws. So once you get it lined up with the hole, those holes are self-tapping, so you don't need to go and do anything once they're printed. Just try and start screwing it in. It's a little bit tight, but that way you know it won't be uh, it won't come loose at any point. Um, don't don't tighten them too much right now. We just want it just so it is not loose. Uh, we have to go and wiggle stuff around to make sure everything's sitting properly. So, like right now, I've got this is loose. You can see it wiggles. Um, Go ahead and tangle it more. So it still wiggles. Getting there, a little bit more. Oh yeah, okay. So it's not tight. I'm gonna go and look at how the LEDs are sitting. So this guy here is sitting well in its hole. Uh, this is the first revision of this case. So the holes, the, the mounting, you can see the, the squares that are cut out for the LED. They're a little bit smaller than in the most recent version. So they don't really sit that well. Um, I'm not gonna go and reprint the case though, for, just for that. Um, but in your case, when you go when you, in, when you go and print off the new version, it's going to they're going to fit much nicer. So this LED here in the middle is actually fitting quite well. I could just try and push it up a little bit. 
and yeah, go ahead and wiggle that around. Um, it's something that you can also do as a final step is make sure that everything, the LEDs all sit well. You can see in the front, that LED is not quite centered. These two look good. This one's not centered, so it could be pushed over a little bit. It's time to install the uh, main control board. I don't know if you built your own uh, out of either perf board. There's there's a there's a layout to build one out. Uh, sorry, a layout file available so you can build one out of a regular perf board. Uh, I think five millimeter by. Six or five centimeter by seven centimeter perf board. Um, there's the uh, uh, KiCad files and Gerber files. So you can etch your own, or you can just buy one of these. I have these available on uh, Tindy.com. Um, so, and the most revision, the most recent revision of this case has these mounting holes spaced out further, so that this mounts right here like this. Uh, for now. This guy, I'm not going to close the case, so I'm just gonna go and throw it on right here, just so that it's mounted, not flopping around. Yeah, and so this is all open source. Everything, the, the plans to make everything is available um, on the GitHub repository. Uh, that's github.com slash td0g slash high underscore speed underscore flash. Um, or on hackaday.io and just look for the Edgerton High Speed Flash project. So now that that's mounted, I'm going to go and move on to the rear half of the case. So there's quite a bit going on. I've already, I've already assembled this, like I said, so I'm not gonna go and remove and reassemble everything, uh, but I will talk about how to put it all together. Um, another thing to note is that this is, again, the first revision of this case. The most recent has a few changes. Um, there's a little bit more space here for the display. In the most recent version, um, this mounting area here for the relay is gone because now I use a, uh, a solid state relay. If I go back to the main control board. Um, this, uh, this is, sorry, this is the solid state relay. Uh, it uses very little power and is very efficient. And it's, uh, it's, it's just a great replacement for the, uh, the, the actual relay that I used previously. So, a few things to point out. Um, these are the, uh, this is the, where the five volt batteries go. Um, go ahead and place, so, so on this side, I have a strip here where the, the battery positive contact is on this side and battery negative is on this side. Um, I use hot glue to just secure it in place. And then on the top, it's actually two separate pieces. So this is this is the negative and solder a wire onto here that goes to the negative on the main control board. And on, this is the positive. So so solder a wire on the positive and run that wire through, through here and in this channel and bring it out here. And this is where you're gonna have the switch. So, so solder to the switch, um, and then solder the other side of the switch, a, a wire, and that goes to the positive side, or to the positive rail on the main control board. Um, so here's the two wires. I've done a whole bunch of testing and monkeying around with this. So right now they're just wires, but, but these two wires will go to the, the main control board. Um, once you have that done, just go ahead and push that the switch in, just like that. Give it a push in. Uh, next up is so on the back side. There's a couple things to point out. Here's the um, the battery cover. So to install that, there's a there's a screw right here. And if I was to, if I unscrewed it, where's my screwdriver? I should have had this ready in the first place, but like I said, this is sort of a sort of a reassembly of this whole this whole unit. So I have this short M3 screw here, and this is another uh, M3 screw on this side, and it fits right into that hole. And then just install it like that. Perfect. Now in here, you'll see the two the two battery contacts. Uh, they're they're oriented vertically, so you need to make sure that 
wherever there's a spring on one side, the other side is the positive contact, is the no spring. Uh, make sure they're all lined up. And I used a little bit of hot glue to secure them in place as well. Now this is my arc of Swiss plate. Uh, this is something that you're going to have to figure out uh, what you want to do. Some people will prefer, this is also a quarter, uh, quarter inch uh, threaded hole, tapped hole. Um, I don't really have a great solution for everyone, but if you want to mill your own arc of Swiss plate out of aluminum, that's great. Um, the whole pattern is, uh, I'll have that available in the repository somewhere. Uh, probably in the uh, in the assembly manual. Um, so yeah, that's the back side. Nothing more to see there. Now, right here is the encoder, and the encoder knob just simply pops onto the encoder, so I can pull it off. So before you you solder the wires onto the encoder. Um, this is an EC11 encoder. It's common on the KY040. Uh, encoder module you'll find on eBay. Um, just get the bare encoder though. Search for EC11 encoder and you'll find some. So before you solder the wires on, just just screw it into the hole here. And then this is the 3D printed knob I have. Um, I've had some feedback that some people don't like it. That's fine, you can make your own, but I, I quite like it. So just push it on there. There. So, so the encoder works, it's a push type. Push, push button and you can turn it. So now the wiring diagram, this is a little bit small to see in the video, but um, on the one side there are two pins. Actually, let me back up. There's the, there's the mounting uh, tabs on each side. So these thick mounting tabs, ignore those. You could even cut those off if you want. Then on one side, there's two pins. That's for the push button. Um, one is to be grounded. Another one is a signal wire. So if you look at the way that the header is, um, black is ground, green is the push button signal, and then the other two are the encoder uh, A and B signals. So it doesn't matter which side is ground, just, just attach one side to ground, the other side to that push button, to, to, the, to the push button signal, which goes right next to ground. And then the other two um, are on the other side. I wonder if I can just turn this. You know what, it's fairly stiff, I can't. But the, there's three pins. The middle pin is ground. The other two are the A and the B. Um, and so just solder one wire up to the A and one wire up to the B. That's A and B here, red and blue. And, uh, and so I used uh, a DuPont uh, uh, connector and uh, a crimping tool to make these, these connectors. You can just get some like, for example, here's some, uh, here's some female to female or male to male uh, wires. You can just get a bunch of these from eBay or Amazon, uh, cut them off, and then, and then solder the cutoff ends to the encoder, and you're good to go. Just depends how much work you want to put into it. And then, here's the trigger. So this is a three and a half millimeter uh, connector. You can see it. I don't know if you can... Uh... Right there is the, the connector. So it just slides into this port here. And before you put it in though, um, you wanna connect the the green, or sorry, the, uh, the three wires up to the three pins on the three and a half mil connector. Um, the middle wire isn't gonna do anything for now. It's there for future use, but right now it doesn't do anything. Um, and then the other two wires are the actual trigger uh, signal. Um, next I have, so here's a, a TM1637 a um, LCD display. I think they usually come with the headers, the male headers coming out the top. So the headers actually come out this way. I desoldered those and added my own female headers on this side. You can't have them poking out this way because there's no, there's no room in the case. But once that's complete, you can just go and slide that into the hole right here. You have to make sure that, that those wires, the power wires, are kind of out of the way. Um, and then finally, the high or the high voltage 
boost converter. So this is uh, this is a nifty little solution I found on eBay. Uh, they're about ten bucks, um, and then there's the three mounting holes there. I use these little, uh, I think they're eight millimeter long M3 screws. One. Two, three. Tighten those up. And this uh, this module, it uh, it doesn't like to work at under about eight and a half volts. So if you use rechargeable batteries. The, um, as soon as they drop, the total battery voltage drops below eight and, a, eight and a half volts, then it's gonna stop working. So the solid state relay is fairly efficient. The voltage drop is pretty low, um, but just be aware of that. If you use non-rechargeable AA batteries, alkaline batteries, then it'll last a bit longer because those tend to be higher voltage. I already have these it wired up here. What I've basically used is, is like I showed you before, uh, but these are male to female connectors. So, so on this end are the three male connectors um, connected to, uh, I believe this is, uh, uh, let me actually look to make sure here. This is uh, voltage in and then ground. And you'll see that there's actually two grounds. They're connected. There's no point in using both of these. All you need is three wires. And here's the, the output voltage. So I'll just kind of show you. The process of installing those. So here's the three pins, and the the, the pinout on the main control board is. Oh, I better uh, I better make sure I have this right. Uh, ground, high volt in or high volt out, and then low volt in. So so make sure that your high voltage is in the middle. So uh, the middle wire here is the red. I'm gonna move that over to the uh, high voltage out. I know this isn't how I had it here a second ago, but this is gonna make it easier to, to, to connect to the main control board. So that's that. Um, and then I'll just have to remember, ground is ground. And it actually says in minus. So in minus is ground. It's connected to the ground pin on the other side of the, of the converter. There we go. Before, before anything else, I wanna show how to program. If you ever wanna update or change the firmware on the main control board, this is an FTDI adapter. Um, it's a, they're, they're kind of expensive. They're, they're like five bucks each on eBay. A uh, fair bit more expensive if you get an official one. But the, the pinout's um, fairly standard. There's uh, ground, CTS, five volt, uh, transmit, receive, and DTR. So those go in the those six pins go in the six header uh, six pin header right there. So that's how you can, can that's how you can update the uh, Atmega three twenty eight uh, microcontroller. Um, that's already done on the units that uh, that I've assembled. So you might not ever have to actually do that. Okay. So next is um, and unfortunately I've gone and uh, changed the the male or female. Uh, pin types on the main control board since I've um, <laughs> had these these set up. What you want to do with uh, so this is the trigger. This is where this connects to the three and a half millimeter um, connector down there inside the case. It goes right on this connector here. Unfortunately, they're both female side, so I can't actually connect them. That's okay. Um, and then your encoder. Again, these are male and the encoder goes right here, connects right here. The encoder connects right up to this connector here, to this jumper here. And then ground is this pin right here. So unfortunately I haven't, uh, I haven't labeled these very well. This was my first experience uh, having a PCB produced. So I could have done a better job next time though. Um, if you install it backwards, you'll know because the encoder just simply won't work very well. You won't damage anything, so that's okay to, to do some trial and error there. Um, 
Next is the high voltage converter. So, so ground is, is the first pin going from bottom to top. So this is ground. This is the high voltage um, output from the converter. And this is the low voltage, the battery input to the converter. So we're gonna go red in the middle and then brown towards the bottom. So ground, high volt, low volt. You can see here ground, high volt, low volt. Um, these four pins are for the TM1637 display. Those are the ones you wanna be kinda of careful with. If you connect those wrong, uh, it could damage the display. So um, basically, first you have, and actually I'll pull up the display so you can see how to connect them. So on the display you have, actually, what you can do is actually install the display right on top like that. So make sure the four pins are all connected like that, and if you installed it right there, uh, the, the display would function. So if you were to look on the display, you have ground, power, data, clock. And these pins are ground, power, data, clock. The last thing you have to do is actually connect the LED banks. So there are three, each bank has three connections, and they're all wired the same way. So here we have the red wire. It goes to the, to the side of the capacitor where the resistors are. It goes onto this pin here, this header here. These four are the high voltage output from the uh, high voltage converter. So that's how we charge the, uh, the capacitor. Uh, next up, here's the, the, um, the gate. So it's where the Faraday bead is. It goes, it connects right beside the gate driver on the board. So this is our TC4452 gate driver. Um, it actually works really well. I've been very impressed with it. But uh, you can see here, what I've done is I have a female uh, DuPont connector going on to the male DuPont connectors on the board. If, uh, I haven't done a lot of testing to see how much the connectors affect the whole system. What I would recommend is that you don't actually use these female connectors, just solder directly onto these pins. Um, that's what I would recommend, but uh, if you imagine that you're gonna be disconnecting and connecting it quite a bit, go ahead and use connectors at your own risk. And then finally, here is the, the negative. So this is uh, the ground for both the gate and for the high voltage, uh, for the for the positive side of the capacitor. So it connects to these ground pins. Um, yeah, same thing. It's uh, both of these, because there's so much current going through them, when it flashes, uh, it would be wise to go and solder them directly onto the pins. Um, uh, I haven't done any testing to see how much it affects that. So so if you, if you use connectors so that it's easier to connect and disconnect, uh, do so at your own risk. Finally, um, we have to actually provide power to the board. So I'm just gonna disconnect these so you can see better. Um, so the positive wire, um, unfortunately this is, a, this is something I could have improved in the board, but for now it's fine. Uh, it goes to this, this is the positive uh, power input. It goes, uh, just go and solder uh, onto here. It provides power to the gate driver and to the five volt um, uh, linear regulator. Uh, oh, and as well to the solid state relay. So that's how the whole system gets, the rest of the system gets five volts is through this regulator. Um, so provide battery power through this uh, J5, uh, sorry, J6 uh, soldering point, and then ground, which is my other wire right here. It's, uh, it's actually broken off. So ground gets connected right here. So yeah. Um, that's all there is to it. When uh, when those are connected, just uh, close it all up. Um, there's uh, I, I'm not going to demonstrate how to calibrate the firmware. If you've bought one of my boards, it's already been calibrated. Um, there's a bunch of testing I actually do with these boards before I send them out. Uh, a few little things like this. Uh, there's a little high pass filter here consisting of uh, these two resistors and this capacitor. So what that does is, is it uh, prevents the, the microcontroller from accidentally turning on the LEDs for too long because 
with 120 volts in this capacitor, if you just turned it on and left it on, it would destroy the LEDs. And I've done that by accident. It's, it's an expensive mistake. So this high pass filter actually makes it so that this gate, uh, this gate driver will only turn the LEDs on for four and a half to five microseconds max. Um, next thing is, uh, I actually go and calibrate, go and test and calibrate the uh, flash times. So that's basically measuring how long the gate driver outputs uh, power to the to the MOSFET gates. So there's uh, there's options in the firmware for half of a microsecond, one microsecond, two microseconds, and four microseconds. And finally, uh, I test the uh, the. Uh, delay from trigger input so so I connect a little push button up to the trigger here and I measure the time between that uh, that trigger being uh, pulled high or pulled low and the output to the gate uh, for output from the gate drivers to the MOSFETs so that's been that's been always under two microseconds which is uh, which is perfect for a high-speed flash not only do you want the flash to uh, uh, the flash pulse is the flash duration itself to be very fast but you want um, the time between triggering and uh, and the actual flash to be very very short um, and well, one other thing that I do is, is test the uh, uh, there's a, Zener, a 120 volt Zener diode right here so that prevents these capacitors from being charged above 120 volts so I'll make sure that that's functional um, and that's another safety precaution to make sure that we don't accidentally damage a whole bunch of LEDs. Um, so yeah, uh, a couple optional features on the board, the sound. Um, if, you, uh, if you were to manufacture these PCBs yourself, you don't actually have to add this, uh, this piezo buzzer or this, uh, this resistor right here. That's just optional, but, but sound definitely improves the user interface experience, so I'd recommend it. Uh, finally, here's these three empty uh, uh, through holes, plated through holes. Those are for a 16 megahertz um, uh, oscillator. So if you want to bump this up to a 16 megahertz clock, you can go ahead and install that oscillator right here. And then, uh, and then you'd have to burn a new bootloader, but you'd be good to go with, uh, with, a, high, with a faster clock rate. I haven't come up with any reason to do so, but in case you ever want to. Um, as a side note, if you ever wanted to actually, uh, if you if you're wondering why there's these little tiny through holes here, 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 and there's actually one underneath the, uh, the linear regulator, uh, those are for a potential update, a potential modification you could do to install, um, I think it's the SX1308 uh, voltage booster so it's a boost converter very simple one so if you add that um, and change out the uh, uh, 7805 regulator here to a there's a, there's a regulator from Pololu which is a drop-in replacement for the 7805 you could actually run this board on a lower voltage um, I haven't done much work to, uh, to prepare these boards for that update but it's there if somebody wanted to experiment with and, and eventually um, modify it to run on four AA batteries instead of the, uh, the eight currently required. Um, but for now, this is such a low cost, high speed flash that using eight AA batteries is, it's fine. Um, the new version that I'm working on, the Mark II, is gonna run off of four AA batteries right off the bat. So that's one of the improvements I'm making. Um, but in terms of flash performance itself, it's gonna be identical. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, I can be contacted at uh, td0g.prime at gmail.com um, or leave a comment on my website. Thank you very much.